Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to another Blue Light Channel Live as part of the Virtual Craft Festival. I believe this is my eighth one. So, uh, yeah, thank you to Jamie and Carl for inviting me back. Um, today, we're going to do a project. Um, I like to do fun projects. So a bit of fun that was inspired by an awesome gift that Shadowphone gave me at Make Essential. Uh, this is an influencer protection kit otherwise known as a spud gun. So, we're going to make a wooden hand cannon. So, looking after you today while I'm doing some turning, we have the boys. So, we have Wayne Jasper, Wayne Woodturner, and Hugh Nine's heart. So, they're going to be looking after you. I'm going to head over to the lathe, and uh, they can let us know what's going on in the chat. So, I have done some pre-turning. Um, I've rounded all the blanks off. Um, this one, I've put a 10.5mm hole all the way through because we're going to use a 10mm dowel later. And I've also put a 13mm hole in here to take the handle. Just to save some time. Right, boys, over to you. Right. So, from the top of the chat, we have in... Uh, Mr. Wayne Woodturner. Oh, hello, Wayne. I didn't know you were there. Oh, sure. <laughs> We've got JP Woodwork. We've got Wayne uh, Bigfoot Woodcraft and the lovely Valerie. We've got Laurie. Joey! Uh, from Steel Blade Woodworks. We've got Kim Thomas. Ward Wilson. He says howdy from the west coast of Arizona. Well... Howdy to you too, Ward. We've got TBC bushings. Copper owl wood turning. All right, Rob. Uh, some shady character. Oh, the shoe's got it's all right. Blue light turners. <laughs> I'm still on uh, two feet. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, that uh, new record. <laughs> uh, we also have Chris Schwing. Um, we've got CJ's Hobbies, Wood Wizardry by Colin, Afternoon Colin, Wyvie Woodshed, Robert Dolman, Chris Dodds, good day everyone, there you go, another Australian here, we have Terry Hooper in, Hi, Anita, Terry. Anita Ball, Michael Azapardi. We've got Clive Sneaks in the house. Yeah. We've got Kez and or Phil <laughs> from Spirit and Bear. Doug Miller at Woodspun Round. Uh, Andrew from AGK Wood Turnings. I said I need to ball in. I've got a need to ball in as well. Um, and we've got Amy DeAngelis in. So I Hi, think Amy. we are all up to speed. If we are not, if we've missed anybody, feel free to uh, pop your name in the chat. We can say hello as and when. Thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon, everyone. Sneak says, you've got this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My good lady wife saved the show. <laughs> the, uh, ah, fair play to her. I had to send her to the hardware shop like 20 minutes ago to go and get some bits so I can finish it. <laughs> That's going to cost me later. <laughs> That's the one, mate. And Outback Artisan has said that he's really enjoying the festival. So many different types of crafts. There's lots on. Uh, I believe it's a knife maker after me. Wayne's on this evening doing some turning. Got the awesome... Kez and Phil from Spirit and Bear. 
Yes, we got a, a good few good ones on today. Uh, at, up after you is uh, the art of craftsmanship. That's Dustin O'Hara. Uh, then we've got Costas on. And obviously, uh, Jake and Jamie with Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, after those, you've got Dan Reese from Zebrano Woodcraft. As you man mentioned, Kez from Spirit and Bear. Andy Berkey up after that. Then there's the matinee of Wayne. You like that, Wayne? The matinee. <laughs> the matinee. I like that. The matinee. <laughs> Actually, um, it's a new we've one. got Zach Higgins straight up after Wayne. Then Scott Hampton would turn ins. And our very own uh, Homie Depot, Joey G. Uh, well, Steel Christine Blades Woodworks. Yeah. Oh, look at this yeah. lot. Joey's, sure. Joey's doing some leather work. Yeah, it's going to make some restraining straps to um, make sure that uh, it's going to send him to Scott. Make sure that he can stand up right. <laughs> <laughs> and finishing up the show tonight, we've got Carl Jacobson. So a oh, good Robert full Dolman's packed itinerary. Hello, Robert. Yeah, so what I'm doing on the end here said... is I'm just going to take it in, but I'm going to do it a little bit at a time because it's held between centres. I'll take a bit out. I'm then going to put the uh, live centre in a bit further. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So Kez and or Phil have said that uh, Joey's leather work is absolutely amazing, which Agreed. it is. <laughs> and JP said, my dog stepped on a bee, keeping it classy is Huey. Good lad, I like it, I like it. <laughs> Excuse you, Scott. Jennifer's yeah. just come in. Hey, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. We're going to do, we're going to do a bit of cheating. Good afternoon, Clive. How are you? <laughs> we're going to do a bit of cheating. So as you can see, I've got so far in, but because of the live centre, I can't get any further with the tool. So I've just got a cone cutter on the uh, end of the drill. You're going to cut a cone. Amy's asking, what grain is this, Scott? I think she means what wood. Uh, so this is oak. Um, a bargain bit of oak. Uh, so I bought this about three months ago. Um, a guy put it on Facebook. He had it was five or six bits that were like six per six square that were the off cuts of the green oak building that it built and i paid the grand price of a tenner so i was well happy nice jamie's been at the TikTok again my dog stepped on a bee it's tree green amy <laughs> Cool. I'm not overly fussed about that bit on the end there because um, we are going to flip it round in a minute. <clears throat> yeah, Amy said you've got nice wood, Scott. Oh, sorry, she said no, I meant wood. Was thinking nice grain and rope grain. Nice work, Scott. <laughs> <laughs>
now the choice to finish on this is entirely up to you um but bearing in mind it's a kid's toy um then it needs to be something that's either food safe or kid safe so you need to make sure it says that on the on the tin uh, for me today we're going to use the chestnut food safe oil nice there's some uh, some banter going on in the chat here i think jp's getting uh, getting owned a bit here because uh, amy says my dog stepped on a bee you are a goose jp go on amy throw <laughs> throw some bread at the silly old goose go on okay <laughs> and then and then wayne bigfoot said my dog stepped on a bee not much of a poet is jp so what Jeez. i've got GP's just said, let it be known, I've got pulled pork, dirty fries, beef burrito, and onion rings on its way. Well, that's Viggy oh. sorted, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> so what what I've done here is, where because I've got a 10.5 mil hole all the way through, yep. I've been turning it between centres. This is a light pull drive from Axminster, and this is obviously just a standard li um, live centre. I'm now going to flip it round. Need to pull that one out a little bit more. Pull out the light pull. Yeah, Use the I'll force, do. Luke. I'll pop it in a carrier just to give it, get it away from the chuck a bit more. Oh, Brian's in. Are you Brian? Hi, you Brian. Hello, mate. There we go. That should give us enough space. So that's Colin's just asking, what are dirty fries? <laughs> uh, dirty fries. Colin, you see that um, search thing at the top of your page? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's going to oh, be Rich the stock again. answer. Hiya, Rich. Hiya, Rich. Hello, Rich. So, what we've done now is we've turned the shape, and we just need to make sure that this end is square uh, for the plunger. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the top point of my skew. Excuse you. Joey said it's taco time. Joey, it can't it can't be more than about eight o'clock in the morning, surely where you are. Again, we're just gonna uh, keep an eye on the centre. Oh. Wind that in as we go. should now be able to get the rest with the tip of the skew. And I'm just going to put a slight chamfer onto the inside. Bootyful, if I do so, so myself. So we'll give that a bit quick sound. You, sound, you sounded just like him then, off that ad part. Do we see it's, it, it's just coming up quarter past seven in the morning where he is. Yeah. And he says it's proper breakfast taquito time. Oh, Martin's in. Hiya, Martin. It's Martin Briggs. Hiya, Martin. Hello, me. And he gives some good ad sagely advice there. He said, don't forget to give Scott a thumbs up. And there's 44 lovely people in, and only 19 of them have hit the thumbs. So there's a fantastic opportunity to be had there, guys. Smack that thumbs up. Right. So that's the so cannon bit done. Amy was asking which skew are you using, Scott? Uh, I think that's uh, inch, that one. Oval. Um, I don't like square edge skews. It's one of... I don't know. I never used to like a skew, and now I own, I think, seven. So this is just a chestnut food safe finish. It's an oil.
because it's an oil, if we put a little bit down the hole, it'll help the plunger slide easier in a minute. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> bit of lube. Right, so we'll put that bit to one side. Um, again, another piece of oak. Uh, all these bits started out at two and a half inches square um, by about, I think the cannon was five inches long and the handle I've done at six inches uh, purely because when I held a bit of wood, it was like, that's enough to go in the chuck. Um, How's it go again, Scott? <laughs> yeah, proper grip, boys. Proper grip. Just, no, I'm gonna say it's a good grip on that one, mate. <laughs> I don't know what I've done with a small chuck here. I'll put it somewhere. Oh, let's see the other side of that. And I'm gonna swap uh, centers. I don't need the point now. Um, so when I'm turning the spindle, what I prefer to use a ring center, so you get the point and then the ring on the outside. A little bit of a better grip. Take the knockout bar out. Just make sure everything's tight. Mark Strong has just come in. Hi, right, Mark. Good afternoon, Mark. How are you? Hello. It's got a little bit of a wobble on that in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a relief cut in here, just so I don't catch the jaws when I'm turning. And then I'm going to get this end up to my 13 mil. with a holder I've already pre-drilled him. Somewhere. <laughs> it's one of those 30 mil spanners, Shock. Not one of them 13 mil spanners. They're rare, yeah. they are. Nearly as rare as 10 mil. Ah, now. I've managed to hang on to the 10 mils. Although I have been tempted to put a chain on them to the toolbox so that they can't go far. Come on, we've got to be nearly there. Cool, yes. there we go. Right, so now we can start putting some shape on. No, it's flying on time here. Yes, mate, yeah, you are. From the 20 past. Only 20 minutes into it, mate. He was asking how many of these have you made before, Scott? Uh, the Blue Peter one this morning. There literally, you go. Whilst watch, literally whilst watching uh, Jamie and Ellen. I'm not the first person to make one. Um, I had a rough idea of what I wanted to do. I had a search on YouTube. Um, I can't remember the guy, the name of the guy whose channel I found, but he'd done one. And uh, don't worry about the questions, Amy. That's what the lives are for. You got questions? Yeah, Feel free ask to questions. ask them. <clears throat> Outback Artisan said. 
I like to sharpen my spanners and use them to get the exact size. Now, <laughs> now anybody comes near my spanners with a grinder, mm, they're going to wish they didn't. <laughs> your spanners are your tools of your trade, though. Yes. My, my, some, sometimes my spanners or you know, well, my tools become frighteningly expensive and you you have to think to yourself, yes, but, you know, they earn a living, so. But, uh, yeah, somebody did uh, recently borrow a ratchet spanner and decide to undo the tightest of nuts with it. Oh, so, Terry Hooper has got a question. He is asking, how many 10 and 13 mil spanners do you have? He's got 10 or more 10 mil and half a dozen 13 mil. So, that's where they've all gone. <laughs> that's where they all are. <laughs> so, um, now, now we know where the actual magnetism they all go to. Terry yeah. Hooper's shed. <laughs> they come to Orsham. Um, <laughs> I can put my hands on free 10 mil at the moment. Yeah. They are possibly one of the most popular sizes that you, you will use in car work as well. 10, 13, uh, 15 and 17. Get rid of some of this waste. Joey, 20 minutes past the hour, mate. <laughs> I'll miss that one. I know. <clears throat> The one I did earlier I took ages. That's why I did some pre uh, pre turning. <laughs> we might do a. Uh... Oh, GP's just asked you a question there, Shug. Not with a ratchet spanner, I'm not JP. No. <laughs> Use an extension bar and a socket. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, don't encourage him. Oh, tut tut. We're trying to keep it classy here. <laughs> I'm raising that looks really big. Does it fit well in the hand, Scott? It does fit well in the hand. <laughs> Good advice there, Amy. Good advice. And what did you say the uh, ammunition is for this, Scott? So, I'm going to be using 10 mil dowels. Um, you know? Mm hmm Peace. size dowels are available. Yep. <laughs> I mean, the video, the video I watched um, used 6 mil, but I only had a long bit of 10 mil dowel, so. Mm hmm so that's, that's what we're going with. bit boring that handle didn't it oh why don't you put some ridges in it mate yeah <laughs> yeah put some burn lanes in it oh now there's a good call lane shall we i oh, should katie sheds just come in oh yeah said, said good afternoon everyone good afternoon to you It's a brand new Easywood Tool christening day, this is. Oh. So these are the uh, Clive Jacobson. Clive? Clive oh, Jacobson. <laughs> Carl Jacobson. Who's that Clive Jacobson guy? Um, <laughs> <laughs> see, look, never been out of the box. 
Uf. Uh, that made short work of that. Very nice. Now you don't have to use these. Um, bit of florist wire. Um, guitar strings. You know anyone that plays a guitar? Yeah, that's what I use guitar string. Alright. Do, do, do not hold the, the string though. Make sure you no, put on some off. sturdy handles. JP jump straight on that with a hashtag. Who's Carl Jacobson? Yes. <laughs> and Doug says, we all need to call Cl uh, Carl Clive tonight when he comes on. No, I'm not <laughs> being invited back. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'm in trouble now, aren't I? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Amy's asked a very pertinent question as well. Where's Baz? There's some Bernie Bernie going on. Where is Baz? <laughs> <clears throat> no, it was good to see Baz at uh, Makers catch up. It was. It was awesome. <clears throat> see everyone. Awesome Just weekend. Just be careful if you do use the Formica, Colin, because uh, it can apparently give off some toxic fumes. So be very careful, mate. Make sure it's well ventilated at the very least. Yeah. Um, I have got some Formica. Um, I tend to use this, so like if I'm doing burning lines in the rims of bowls, yep. it's just an edge and strip of uh, worktop. But anything spindle-wise, then I always use a wire. Yeah. Poor old Sneaks. Sneaks says, leave me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Clive does get the blame for a few things whenever the name Clive's mentioned. <laughs> and he, he'll know what I mean when I say that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was funny, though. It was hilarious, mate. <laughs> Did I miss something there? No, deals last year. Ah. Uh, when? <laughs> when, when, when Cindy shouted at the dog to stop pooing on the grass. And she shouted, oh, yeah. Clive, Clive, stop pooing on him. <laughs> that was so funny. Clive went, wasn't me. <laughs> All right, so there we go. I used the uh, tip of the skew, which has got a little bit there. So this is just a carving knife. Oh, nice hot knife, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Clive, Baz is taller than you think. I had no idea as well. <clears throat> what did you say? Is Wayne a spoon knife? Yeah, it's, it's a spoon chisel for carving spoons. It's a nubbity nub remover. That's what it is. Mm hmm. So, there's. The handle done, so we'll oil this up. <laughs> Jamie said you're safe. Carl ain't got a clue who comes on. He don't do nothing except appear on the last time slot, the lazy so-and-so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's probably still early where uh, Carl is, isn't it? Oh, oh yes. I bet, yeah. yeah. Very, very. Heck yes. Right. So, one handle. So now what we need to do is get that out of the way. 
and make the plunger. Yeah, eight hours behind JP says in Oregon. <clears throat> so we'll remove the elbow stabby thing. This is a piece of babinga. And because I've got gripper jaws on, I'm just going to mm -hmm. grip it in the chuck like so. Um, if you haven't got gripper jaws, if you've got like dovetail jaws, then I wouldn't recommend doing it like this. Why? All you're doing is gripping on the points of the jaw anyway. Yeah, but these have got the extra rings on the inside, don't they? Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. Right. So first thing we need to do is square this face up. No, we don't. I haven't made this one round yet, have I? We'll round it off first. the relief cut him and now we're square off the edge calm down Jamie calm down Jamie I can see a lovely bromance uh, springing up now So now we've got a uh, straight edge on there. What we need to do is put a 10 mil hole in here just to receive the bit of dowel that's going to become the plunger. So we'll take that one now. Twenty-seven minutes left to go, Scott. Brilliant. I've slowed down a bit. <laughs> All right. So now. 10 mil doubt. Brilliant. We'll glue that in there shortly. Where's the barrel? So what I want to do with this bit here is try and get it to the similar size of the end of the barrel. Wayne, I have no idea what JP is going on about now. <laughs> no, he's putting... He's, it's that bromance he's got with Clive at the moment. They want to jump about in the waves together. <laughs> <laughs> I worry about that boy sometimes. <laughs> I do. I worry about it. He should have been in the Navy, Jamie. Life on the ocean waves. <laughs> um, Amy says, lovely colour wood and you could use the shavings in a potpourri. Or as I'm, or as I'm used to like calling it, pot pourri. Pot pourri. <laughs> Terry Hooper said, "Wayne would have finished by now and be on his second. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> Third. <laughs> Shh. 
Can you see that from Jamie Shug? Uh, I will do in a second. And my phone stops being a slippery bar of soap. Oh, yes. Oh, I know the one you're on about now. <laughs> so we when just have the rid... Yeah. Got rid of some of that um, excess. So Colin said uh, that he's broken his Jacob's chalk. Uh, so he's got to go and get himself a new one, he said. Uh, is that a trip to Axminster, uh, Colin? I'm, I'm banned from going into Axminster because every time I go in there, I end up coming out with something. <laughs> Mark, the gentleman Some... would turn to put a post up yesterday, didn't he, where he went into Axminster for one thing and come out having spent it a fortune. <laughs> yeah. And he still forgot the web brass. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Rich is asking, Colin, have you turned your pen yet? <laughs> Joey says, heck, Wayne would have been finished and be down on a bottle of wine, probably starting on the second. <laughs> all right, boys, all right, calm down. <laughs> hey, don't worry, mate. <clears throat> you know the score. It's just a commercial. It's only a commercial. When you are working this close to the chop, just be careful of your fingers and your knuckles. Amy's asking, how much is that going to set you back, Colin? <coughs> and Colin says, not that much, Amy. Good old eBay, about 20 quid. No, I'll say they're not that dear. Nah. Depending on what you want. Yeah, unless you want Something like Wayne Scott, which is a good idea. And I think when I come to upgrade mine, I'm going to go with something with the threaded. Yeah, you're always better having something on the a, th a thread on the in inside of the two most tapers so you can use a drawbar if it's in the headstock. And Terry Hooper said, what's life if you can't have fun? Correct. <clears throat> be boring wouldn't it if you couldn't have a bit of fun that's it mate too much of it's based around work nowadays anyway so you need some get away from it it's a shadow phone called their potato gum an influence protection kit I'm going to call this getting your lazy teenage son out of bed kit. <laughs> so it might not be rubber, uh, wooden dowels. Might be like <laughs> frozen peas or something hard and horrible. Frozen peas. Do you remember them, the pea shooters we used to have when we were kids, where you go down the, uh, the down, down to the grocery and buy the uh, the dried peas? Yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, I hadn't seen a potato gum for ages until Shadow Foam gave that to me. Mm-hmm. I think Jamie was saying the same. Right. So we do the same again. Now, I'm not going to oil this bit until I've CA'd the plunger in. Yeah. That's another beauty of using oil. You can do it afterwards. Come on. Go. 
<laughs> Spud guns. Spud guns. Spud. Do you reckon you could turn a pea shooter? Oh, I would think so. I can't see why That's not. That's got a long thing turning, not. isn't it? There might have to be an idea. Turn a pea shooter. A little bit of use the, You'd have to use the drill through the tail stock, I'd imagine, wouldn't you? Yeah. Do a bit of hand sanding on the end here. We used okay. to turn pea shooters into dark guns. Dark guns? Yeah, what you do is you put a, put a, um, a piece of wool through the eye of a needle. Yep. And use that as the uh, sort of the. Oh, what the hell do you call them? Is it fletch? And then yeah. stick that into the pea shooter and fire them. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to glue these together with CA. Um, but we're going to use a new CA. So, 03A uh, is a new CA out on the market. Um, being stocked by Woodwork Supplies. Um, and that makers, they've supported a few of us. Um, so, they gave us a box. Let's go through what we've got in the box. We've got a little bit of time, haven't we? Um, so you get you a can sure of accelerator, um, 50 gram bottle of fin, 50 gram bottle of medium, 50 gram bottle of thick, and a 50 gram bottle of thick uh, black, and then some different nozzles. Um, so we're going to use the thick, and we're going to use the accelerator. Um, keep an eye out. Uh, there is an affiliate coming up with them. Um, I've told Starbond where to go. Um, and these guys are actually based in my hometown of Burgess Hill. So, uh, welcome nice to, to the yeah, sub fun. Um, I've got, that was it. No, no, that weren't Burgess Hill. <laughs> no, <laughs> that one was well, Hill, weren't it? <laughs> Doug Miller said, YouTube kicked me out momentarily. Did an update in the middle of Scott's live. How Outrageous. rude. Outrageous. <laughs> How very, very rude of them. <laughs> Outrageous. Right, let's pop that to one side. We'll let that go off. Just get another square back later. Well, that's Colin doing said that. he made a blowpipe, blowpipe out of an old-fashioned TV aerial. Which was the perfect size for dried peas and had a hell of a range on it. Fair play. <coughs> Stay. Come on, Scott, you can do it. A bit of activator just on the end of the. Bit the uh, bit of brute force and ignorance to put it together. How much brute force are you using, Scott? A lot, Qu quite a lot, by the way. That's why I asked. <laughs> why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we're going to do is we are going to um, one and a half pound what? ball peen hammer. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're going to give it some uh, <laughs> persuasion. You're going to use the silver persuader. No, it's brass. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's in there now. All right. Next, we want them, 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 them. So up next is uh, Dustin. Yep, yeah, I'm just about to pop a link into the chat for Dustin's live, um, which is coming up straight after Scott.
So now this is all glued up. Yeah, you can pop some colour on it. Pop some oil on it, and it pops the colour out. Don't it just? When I was planning that, I thought I'd use a nice contrasting bit of wood. <laughs> okay. Chris Dodd said, I love all the different accents that you guys have over there. Thick, thick, and other. <laughs> right. There's plenty of them. Eh? You've only got to go five miles down the road here, Chris, and it changes completely. Same here. <laughs> go near Brighton, it totally changes. <laughs> so now what we're going to do we're just going to put a couple of little eyes in just trying to line up the grain a bit Again, if you're holding something and drilling, be super careful. <clears throat> Especially with little drill bits. I'm not quite sure that. Stuff. I'm not quite sure about this one, Scott. Should we take it with a pinch of salt? Because Wayne Bigfoot said, I haven't got an accent, Chris. <laughs> no one can understand him, so we don't know if he's got an accent. <laughs> Uh, an outback artisan said, I had a Cornish pasty over there once and got royally laughed at because of my Auss Aussie accent. Nah. Nothing that, wrong that's, with a Cornish pasty. That, that's just rude. There's nothing wrong with a Cornish pasty or an Aussie accent, mate. Nothing no. at all. And and we're very good at, at badly doing Aussie accents as well. It's true. That guy down there's got no strides on. <laughs> Good day, Skippy. <laughs> you can... You can blame our mate Paul Hogan for that. Yeah, that ain't a knife. <laughs> yeah. I need a knife. I've got a dog. Fant fantastic series of films they were. <clears throat> there we go. Right. So, as I said, little eyes. Um, I wanted the eyes like that go in the neck curtain. But these are all the hardware shop had, so this is what we've got. I've done, I'll show you, is before I've, um, before the live, I just opened up a little bit so we can get an elastic band in there. So there's one. Name Obviously, keep it. Yeah. Loads of time. Yeah, you obviously you keep them in the. Uh... Not even ten. Oh, Christine to uh, Scott is making a handheld cannon. Yeah. It's a uh, get your teenage son out of bed device. <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris is asking, what's a pasty? A pasty is um, a, a meat-filled pastry, really. Un, but it's not like a pie. It's basically a circular piece of pastry with a meat filling, and the pastry's folded over. And a thick crust on it, isn't it? Yeah. Because that's what you're meant to hold and not eat. That's right. And it, it, most of the the reason why it, the, the Cornish is so famous for it is because it would be taken down to tin mines, and as Scott said, you held the thick, crust part of it so obviously they never wash their hands or anything they would eat the pie eat the pasty uh, and throw the rest but throw the crusty bit away but uh, i think that's the best bit myself yes so <laughs> right so very famous in certain parts of argentina argentina i should say Argentina. Uh, well, Argentina. I corrected myself. <laughs> I 
Now, the tightness you do the elastic band will affect how far you can pull it back and how far it goes. Um, yeah, Terry's saying it can have meat one end and apple at the other, or f some sort of fruit phone at the other. That way, you have your dinner and you have your dessert. Ah, I food. see how that works, Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's come back to Ugly Cam, as I call it. That one. So, there we go. And what we can do is somewhere here. Another piece of dowel. It's a pack of 10 mil dowels. In the hole like so. Yes! Yay! Bit of fire. Fire in the hole. <laughs> Let's bring the boys back in. There we go. Fun little project. Um, you know, you can do it out of scraps. Don't have to use oak. Um, and now if he doesn't get out of bed, I've got two. That's it. Tech pot shops. <laughs> so, Easy reload. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys, for earworm for me. Thank you, everyone, no that's come in. Not a problem, um, mate. I'm going to end a little bit earlier. That'll give everyone a chance to uh, head over to Justin, uh, Dustin, get a cup of tea, get a cup of coffee, use the toilet, um, and enjoy the rest of the day. There we go. So I've just now. popped a link in there, and there that's for go. Dustin O'Hara. All right. Until next time, I shall see you soon. I'm going to hit that button. <laughs>